This is mean. Okay. Okay, we'll tell you what. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, it's unusual. We, we don't have the, the usual people or the people who were here from the last uh, interrupt event, so we may not be able to make as good progress, but we'll see. So basically, what I'm, I'm assuming you guys can see my screen, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, good. So basically, what I want to do is just to start some discussions around. Oops, sorry. My headphones fell out. I just want to start a quick discussion around ideas for what we can do around the interrupt event. Um, and just to refresh people's memory, for those of you who weren't part of the last time, um, I'm trying to remember what we did. So last time what we did was we had a, a event a producer, actually I think we had more than one event producer maybe, um, generate an event related to an image being uploaded into a data store. Um, and people then took that event that had, I believe, the URL to the image. They then processed the image in some way. Um, some people did some sort of image analysis. Other people modified the image in some funny way. And then they ended up posting their results to that processing uh, to Twitter. So for example, in the IBM case, we analyzed the image to figure out what was in it. And then we uh, posted to Twitter a picture of the image itself along with what uh, Watson thought it was. A lot of people did that kind of image analysis. Other people, I think, for example, Red Hat uh, might have modified the image in some funny way uh, and then posted that to Twitter. And so it was just an interesting way to show that, yes, everybody could receive a cloud event, process it correctly, um, and then do something fun with this image that they got. And so that was a very simple little demo. Uh, so this time around, um, I'm, I, I think we're just basically looking to do some sort of, again, some sort of interop uh, proving that we can all uh, receive or possibly send cloud events um, and assume that we've done it in some interoperable fashion. Um, so let me pause there. Um, has anybody had a chance to think about what they thought might be a good demo, either from a straight technical perspective in terms of this would be a really neat thing to demonstrate around cloud events or something that just think would be a good uh, presentation type demo, you know, do you have a, like a big wow factor kind of a thing? Has anybody given any real thoughts to this yet? Um, I'll take a stab. So sure. I, I think it'd be nice if you could show different transports being involved. Yeah, so uh, my understanding of all of this is that I should be able to maybe take something over HTTP and then pass it on over NATS or something like that and show, show that stuff can move around across different transports without loss of data as well. Ooh, I like that. That's a good idea. Especially since we have more than one transport spec, that'd be a really good idea. I like that. All right. Any other ideas? Okay. What about the application itself? Has anybody given any thought to that? Part of me was trying to figure out, is there some way to leverage what we did before, meaning you know, some of those image analysis type things? or something completely different. I'm completely wide open here. Obviously, there were some ideas that were mentioned in this 246 issue. Uh, has anybody a chance to take, had a chance to take a look at those and see if any of those look interesting? I like your telephone one, in a way. The, okay. the first one that's listed. I, know I haven't looked at any of the others, I have to say, but, but that first one looks interesting, but that might, I'm not sure if there's more work involved in that one. I don't know. Yeah, this one I, I thought was kind of interesting. What, what, I, what might be really interesting about that one is, especially if it involves multiple transports, because let me show you something. I had an intern just you know do a quick mock-up, right? So from a graphical perspective, we could show the cloud event traversing through all the different platforms that want to be in there. And each one of these links could technically be a different transport, right? So we could, in some way, have it recognize you know, what kind of transport is being used and display it in there. Uh, we could also talk about how each one maybe added or modified a property in there, so we, we could have it have the dashboard, you know, recognize what what prop or what properties were modified. So from a graphical perspective, I thought this was kind of interesting. Um, I just wasn't sure whether we, it would make sense to also incorporate the image processing thing. So, for example, perhaps rather than sending the results to Twitter. There could be something displayed next to each one of these icons with the output of what would have been shown to Twitter, right? So, for example, 
a picture of the image that was modified, or it's the text that says, I think it's a, a dog, right? That kind of thing. So I think there could be lots of things we could do here in this kind of graphical thing, showing the interoperability between the various platforms involved. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, I watched the the demo or the, the playback of the last demo you did, and, and I think you got good audience engagement by having that sort of image processing and, you know, ran almost sort of a random thing going on there. Um, I, and I'm wondering how you could, how you engage them, how you engage the crowd. Yeah, so that the demo itself, in terms of engaging the crowd, uh, Austin was up there on stage, and uh, it was it was it was, he did a really really nice job. He, he basically went through and I guess uh, I'm trying to remember. I think he initiated the the generation of a new image being uploaded into the, the data store, um, and then he basically just switched over to to Twitter to see the outputs, right? Um, yeah. And I wonder if you can do, I, a lot of this depends on what capabilities are in those clouds, but I mean, you could maybe do something along the lines of that telephone game where you send a phrase and then it keeps being translated into different languages and then eventually turns it back into the source language again. Yeah, almost like a game of Chinese whispers. So, you know, if I went from... English to French to Spanish to Portuguese and back to English, would I end up with a um, the same sentence again, or would I have something comically interpretive? Yeah, I like that. That's a nice idea too. You're full of good ones today. I like this. <laughs> it, it's Friday. What can I say? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Actually, uh, this is Heinz. I, I, I had assumed from reading the telephone one, which I, I liked the best, that uh, uh, I had assumed what was just described was what you were uh, considering. And I, I agree. I kind of like it as well. Okay. Yeah, no, actually, to be honest, when I wrote that one up, I was just thinking of looking at the, the various properties and make sure that nothing gets lost in, as, it, as the product moves through it, right, to ensure that each one doesn't just add new properties, but also acts as a proper gateway and doesn't drop anything. But that's I think I like I like this idea. <laughs> I, well, I, I think you can do both, yeah, because you can sort of accumulate that history of translation as you go. So at the end, and I'm not sure how you would um, make sure that the last guy actually turned it back into, you know, the the original target language. Um, but you've got that audit trail of 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 all the steps you went through, um, and maybe that's what which is similar to what you had, you know, in that initial description. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, you're right, though. We would have to make sure that the last guy translated back to the original language. You know, English, we assume that's in, it's English. Um, but I'm sure we could probably figure out some way to do that, because obviously the dashboard um, could be told which one can handle, you know, which, which, which one can handle which inputs and which one can handle what outputs and make sure that they, you know, match up all the way around. Um, I'm sure we can manage something like that. That's a neat idea. And actually, I guess if we did that, you could then also have each one display its its um, its translated output every step along the way. And you can then obviously just compare the first and last. That's an interesting idea. I like that. I wonder how many people actually support tra language translation, though. Well, yeah. If everybody ends up turning around and calling Google, then we've that <laughs> that may not be the right outcome. <laughs> that would be so funny. Uh, um, that's a good question. That, that's, that's something we should probably ask, though. Um, okay. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure IBM and Watson could have fun with that one. I, you know what? I, I I honestly don't know the answer to that question. To be perfectly honest, I, I, I'm going to have to find out. Um, okay. Anything else? Any other ideas bouncing around your guys' heads? Well, um, we, we, um, I, I like the idea of showing different transports. And there are also a few um, well, broker-based ones, or can at least be broker-based, like, like MQP. Um, so instead of that ring we saw, um, mm -hmm. there could also be um, events or message gateways uh, in the middle 
doing a fan out and then this picture could form as something like flowers or something like this. So with each uh, event gateway or broker in the middle of one flower. So an event comes in, the gateway uh, distributes have, to all the various yeah, people. You have different gateways um, doing fan out to some functions. And those gateways would be in the middle of one flower. And then you had different centers. Okay, so almost move the CE into the middle as acting as sort of a gateway. And then it can talk to each one of these guys. And would you, um, in your mind, are you assuming each one of these still does, in essence, that translation or whatever processing you were talking about? Yeah, for example, the I think Azure Event Grid could be one uh, other center of, an, of a flower, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe each of them could use some different transport. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, now... so, so just to add on to that, then may, may, if we're looking at a, a more of a pub sub rather than a point to point thing is maybe yes. you, you randomize the event source, which then causes a publish, which then would pick a random set of, you know, consumers from that. So you don't get the same nodes every time you run the, the functions sort of thing. Sort of, com ah. I, 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 I'm curious how. You know, I mean, if you want to stick with this translation thing, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure how you would then maybe bring that those different things all back together. You know, because you really want a fan out and fan in um, sort of model, I guess. If you need to bring it all back to a point, yeah. So you lost me there for a second, John. Sorry. 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 No, that's I, it's probably me because I was trying to take notes at the same time. So yes. <laughs> describe it again. I'd like so, so I, I'm just trying to couple the two ideas. Yeah. So I, I like the I like the notion of um, more of a broadcast and subscribe uh, model, so that event go can be handled with multiple um, subscribers um, or processors. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is how you would then use that model in the model, you know, if you wanted to do this sort of telephone game thing, um, how you, that would play into that sort of thing. So that my theory was if you could sort of somehow randomize the, the set of nodes that are going to participate in each round of that conversation sort of thing, or maybe perform the initial translation. Yeah. Because at the moment you've got a ring, you, know, you you diagrammatically showed it as a ring, yeah. Right. So I, I go from A to B to C to D, uh, and I can't remember the the other guy, um, the previous speaker was saying, wouldn't it be nice to do, you know, a publish and then maybe that event gets picked up by A, B, and C in parallel, yeah, processed in parallel, and then emitting another thing which maybe goes to D, E, and F in parallel. Uh, the the problem then is how do you coerce that conversation back together again into a single output? Right. Interesting. So was that Heinz or Klaus that mentioned the idea of the the fan out? That was me, Klaus. Okay. So do you have any comments what Jim was saying there in terms of how do you sort of tie it all back together? Uh, or I like the idea of randomizing it somehow. So you, in, in the demo, you could start it several times and it, every time it would uh, turn out to be somehow different. Yeah, but how, how are you, so once a node gets say a sentence and it does some translation on it, in your mind, what were you envisioning it doing with that sentence? Just displaying it someplace or sending it off to another node to do something? What, what were you kind of thinking there? Actually, I didn't have an idea what the, uh, each individual node could do with this. <laughs> I just had this idea of this uh, overall form of a flower or a snowflake or something like this forming because of this broadcast um, model or approach. Okay. Yeah, because I'm trying to think from a demo perspective, if we, if we do a fan out kind of thing, I, I, I can see that being looking really, really cool. Like you said, like a flower blooming, that'd be really neat. I'm just trying to then figure out um, if each one does some sort of translation or whatever possibly it does, if it displays it in some way, 
especially if we do a language translation thing, it's, it'd be, I mean, it'd be neat to see all these different languages pop up, but there's no way to know whether it's correct unless you speak all those various languages. So may, maybe you use that mechanism to select the, the first translation or maybe the last translation. Yeah, so, because uh, I think if you always send, send around the same loop, um, the outcome may well be uh, affected by whoever does the first translation. Yeah, so if you randomize that, and so it's not really, I, I guess, to, it, it's, it's minimizing Klaus's use case a little bit, but it, it, it's still a pub sub function, um, but maybe instead of it going to multiple people, it, it would just end up at one subscriber. Yeah, it's almost like a partitioned um, event topic or something. Well, I mean, this, this, you know, in this particular model, this obviously this is coded up to be hard coded, but there's no reason why the dashboard couldn't randomize the order of these things, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, do people like the idea of? So, okay, let me, let me state my opinion, and I, I don't want to influence anybody, but based on what I've heard so far, I personally really like the idea of the of the uh, of the, of the translation thing. I think that's really cool. I think mainly what stands out to me about that is it's, it's, it's going to be fun, especially if you could start out at like say English, go through a whole bunch of languages and end up back in English. And then you can have some, you know, humorous aspects to it because obviously they're probably not going to be the same. <laughs> um, uh, so it's going to have, there's going to be some humor there. And I really like that aspect of the demo. I think that's going to be really neat because it engages the audience. They'll laugh and, and be, you know, amused by it. Um, so I really like that aspect of it. So I think, so what, what other people think? Is that something you guys think is interesting enough that we should head down that path and then figure out the mechanism by which we hook everything up as, as a next step? Or are there other ideas you guys are thinking about in terms of the application itself? Uh, this is Heinz again. Mm -hmm. um, we actually had done something similar for an app many years ago when uh, I was working on a project where we did have a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. uh, we did do language translation, but what made it funny is the initial, um, the initial, uh, you know, text was a colloquialism. So that way, <laughs> by the time you got to the end, it actually did become very funny. For example, uh, the Swedish, uh, uh, they have an expression like, I like that. The expression in Swedish was English translation was hug on you, <laughs> right? So as you start going through these, the uh, colloquialism might become very funny. Uh, the second is, uh, I, you know, maybe a bit selfish because the company I work for does multi-protocol messaging. Uh, it would be kind of interesting uh, where we might have multiple different vendors where, you know, it comes in AMQP that points to a URL that goes, you know, could grab it, translate it, and then point to maybe an MQTT that then comes and points to it that does HTTP and maybe show an interoperability of going from a JSON payload to a protocol binding to another protocol binding um, while each one is doing a translation. And you might be able to actually stick in the path as part of the user extensions so that every time it goes through one of these uh, translations and different uh, uh, messaging transports to add that in so when it gets back to the last one which again it could be a loop you'd know where you started and where you went um, to uh, actually see the path to show all the different protocols you know that this was JSON versus you know a binding and what was the binding just a couple of ideas yeah kind of no together there yeah no, those are all good I like those um, so tell you what Talk a little bit like we could do. Was there anybody else on the call who had a another idea or a suggestion? Because it seems like we're sort of circling around this idea of the translation thing, but I don't want to preclude other ideas if you guys have them. Okay. So what I'm thinking is um, two things. One is I think we first need to figure out how many players can actually do translation, right? Because if we only have two, it's not nearly as exciting. Um, so I think we first need to figure out who in the group can, has a platform that can do some sort of translation. And then 
figure out the various transports that people would be able to support in the time frame. Um, and then third is to figure out the, the best way we want to sort of uh, connect up the various nodes, right? Is it a circle? Is it a star pattern with a, or a flower blooming kind of thing? Uh, figure out the best way to sort of connect up all the various nodes together. Is there something else in that sort of list of things to sort of figure out that you guys can think of that I'm forgetting or not thinking about? Okay, so what if we do this? What if we um, sort of ping the group, at least with those, I, I guess with all three, right? I, I, what I can do is I can send that a note to the group asking who has the various transports available or you know what transports each person can support, find out who can do a translation at all, and then start brainstorming ideas on the best way to connect with the nodes. And the two ideas we have so far is, you know, some sort of circular kind of thing, start at one, work your way throughout the other, and then sort of a blooming flower kind of thing. We can figure out the right way to, to, to sort of uh, bring it back at the end. <clears throat> um, what do you guys think about that? Having me send out the note asking for input. Seems a reasonable plan. Um, one more idea just got mm -hmm. um, if this translation um, I mean if there are not enough uh, um, providers who have uh, translation um, there is I think on the internet there are right now plenty of, of sites that offer something like buzzword generators or if, um, generating complete phrases so if, if you uh, do something like a distributed uh, phrase generator that could also be fun if the right set of words is used to, to do random gener um, selection of words. So you, are you suggesting something along the lines of we want to construct a sentence that has, you know, noun, verb, noun, adjective, verb kind of thing, or we just go to yes, random websites? Yes. So, yeah, oh, I, like that. Like, I oh. remember at KubeCon in, uh, in Copenhagen there was also um, this keynote on the last day, uh, he also <laughs> had a generator of something like this for strategies. Oh, interesting. Uh, so with that particular case, do you, um, I'm trying to think, would each node be responsible for, it? almost like, well, I know it's probably an American thing. I don't know if you guys know this, but the, the Mad Libs games, right? Where there's a sentence with, with words missing, you say, give me an adjective, and then you randomly fill in an adjective kind of thing. Yes. Um, maybe. Um, would you, so each node, I guess, would be responsible for suggesting a word to fill in the blank, right? Yeah, so depending on the event it catches, it has to um, generate, uh, yeah, to fill in a verb or an attribute, something like this. Interesting, okay. Um, so if each function has a different set of uh, words, it randomly chooses from. Okay. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I mean, I just had a look at the programmable web um, site, and apparently there are over 150 uh, translation APIs out there. Um, I'm sure a lot of those are pay to play, but um, you know, it, there could be there could be stuff there that people can use. Okay. So it sounds like when I send out my note, then we have uh, two different sort of uh, applications then to put in front of the group. One is sort of the the English, I'm sorry, not English, um, the sentence translation from one language to another, and then we have the distributed phrase generator type of idea. Anything else you guys want me to put into the note to get to solicit feedback on? You, do you have a, any ideas? You've been kind of quiet. Maybe he's up, oh, there we go. Hey. Hello. Hey, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just like understanding uh, your, uh, you guys ideas here. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I think the telephone one like looks more interesting to me. I'm sorry, which one? Uh, the first one, the telephone. Uh, tele. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there, were there any other ideas that you had thought of that you might want us to consider? 
Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, so I'll tell you what. Let me let me do what I said. I'll I'll, I'll take the action item to send out a note with the, the two ideas that we're that we're thinking of, and see what the rest of the group thinks. Also, then uh, ask the question of who can do uh, uh, language translation. Um, I assume the, the distributed phrase generator thing, I'm assuming everybody would be able to do that because it's really a matter of just going to the dictionary and grab a list of words that fit a particular category, right? Noun versus verb, something. And they can just randomly pick one of those. Or, or uh, Heinz, I'm sorry, was that Heinz or Klaus Kimmer? Were you thinking of something more complicated than that? No. I, I just, by the way, I just posted that example that was mentioned in the keynote. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, they even call them Mad Libs. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, why are you not popping up? It's producing real, I mean, long. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay, tragedy here. sentences, but yeah. it's still. <laughs> Interesting. That could have some fun to it. OK, so let me make sure I make a copy of that. <clears throat> Put that in the notes. So here, there it is. Okay. Oops. Okay. Anything else? All right. Um, any other topics related to this you guys want to bring up at all? Otherwise, we might as well let you guys in Europe go enjoy your weekend, and I'll send out that note. All right. In that case, thank you guys. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I want to mention. No, I think that's it. All right, cool. All right, thank you guys very much. We'll, we'll talk next time. Yep. Good. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.